to introduce myself, I should start with a little bit of Italian that I have learned. Ciao, mi chiamo Dumoke Verissimo. I'm the author of A Small Silence. I've also published um, two poetry collections. Um, I Am Memory and The Birth of Illusion. My latest work, which I just read up from and I talked about, has been shortlisted for um, two prize, two prize, and I won one. It was shortlisted for the Ondata Prize and also won the Idol Cinder Prize. Um, uh, some of my poems have been widely anthologized and produced in languages like Norwegian, it, um, of course, also in Italian, French, Macedonian. Um, I pretty typically write on themes around trauma, pain, memory, uh, although I'm also getting interested in the intersection between um, the human reality and ethereal experiences. I intend to explore this in my future writing. At this time, I have a work that would be published next year. It's a children's book. Um, it was written in my mother tongue, which is Yoruba, and translated by me into English language. Hopefully, it should also be translated into Italian, so you get to read that too. Um, that's about me. Um, and then also, I am back in school. I am currently completing my PhD program at the University of Alberta. Um, I'm working on um, literary depictions of the Nigeria Biafra War um, and and how it shifts uh, social relations in the present. So, um, and then I guess now that I've talked about myself, you'll be interested in a small silence and how I came to write the book. Well, I could start from the beginning. A small silence. I had gone to a friend's visit a friend when I lived in Lagos. I currently live in Canada, where I'm studying for a PhD, as I mentioned. And um, when I was in Nigeria some years back, I had gone to visit my friend, a very close friend. And we had started talking about um, our personal problems. And then we moved to the situation of the country, our frustrations, and... Just as we began talking about our frustrations with the country, our nation, Nigeria, um, the electricity went off and we just found ourselves in this hairy silence. And it was at that time that this thought came to me, which was, um, I started thinking of what it would mean to live the rest of my life or one's life in the dark. As I thought about this idea, I found that it started to grow inside my mind. And so I told my friend I needed to go home. That night, I wrote a complete short story. It was called The Lightless Room. And um, it even was published. But I found that I couldn't stop thinking about the two main characters in the book, Prof and Desire. And the more I thought about them, the more I realized that they could tell a story, one of the stories that haven't been told adequately, which was um, the situation of those who fought for the democracy and who encountered the despotism of the military years in Nigeria. And that is a brief introduction on how the book came about. The book itself is um, a story about a professor who was a former political activist and who had been in prison for 10 years for his activism. And when he returns from prison, a lot of things had changed. He was a man whose spirit had been broken and he was trying to emerge into something new. So he decided to stay in the dark, in a dark room, um, while his friends and families visited him. He was living in this dark all by himself until a young woman 
comes visiting. This young woman called Desire, a curious student and admirer of Prof, um, be, uh, reveals something he hadn't noticed about the darkness. And as a converse, they form a kind of bond that slowly um, begins to, you know, bring comfort to to prof but act as, as an irritant a torment to desire so the story revolves around these two characters and opens on opens up their lives i mean their past the two main characters prof and uh and desire uh you know like i said they were story, they were characters that you know took possessed my mind prof i would say <clears throat> could stand for a whole lot of freedom fighters um who were who believed in nigeria and who despite the um the inf different forms of injustice that they that they encountered stood their ground but when we talk about the fact that although we talk about the fact that they fought for the country, we never think about how they fought for themselves. Most of them still carry the trauma of these years. And I, I guess one of the things that I, interested me in the character of Prof was trying to explore that trauma and how people live with it. Perhaps, you know, they never really deal with the trauma and it con it continues to determine and shape how they see the world but so the prof the character prof the prof of character attempts to you know represent that uh, the, the the people like that why desire is um ah uh, i can't i can't even i mean the the, the character of desire as strange as this sound, I would say came to me. She revealed herself as someone that needed to tell Prof's story. And so she's both symbolic um, of the inner yearnings of a man who is trying to rediscover himself, as well as um, representative of the, uh, the, the flux of emotions, you know, that we carry as a nation. Um, she's just a character, but at the same time, she's um, she embodies a whole lot of, I mean, the confusion in trying to understand our own selves and our own new realities. Um, they are both characters that I enjoy writing very much. Uh, there are some characters that tell you to sit down, they tell you their story, and then you write. And I, I consider the character of Prof and Desires like that. They, they wanted to tell their story. They wanted to get their story out in the world. Uh, and another thing that I guess would be interesting to talk about would be why did I say this story in Lagos? I've I've grown up in, I mean, I grew up in Lagos most of my life, so that would be logical. But then there is something more. At the time of the, um, the, the Lagos as a city is very vibrant. And there, there are actually people who tell you that if you leave Lagos, you would never feel the same again. This city is a story that needs to be told. And writers keep trying to tell stories about Lagos. But nobody has ever told the complete Lagos story. And so telling, setting the story in Lagos is an attempt to tell a part of the Lagos story. And now it is so much um, embedded in this nationhood of, the, of Nigeria, uh, in understanding the nationhood of Nigeria's nationhood especially as Lagos was also the former capital of Nigeria. And so it carries a lot of history, pre-colonial history, colonial histories, and even post-colonial history. It's, it's, a, it's a city that is 
heavy with memory and um, it's vibrant it has gone through the different era political era and still you know even though it's no longer the cap capital of the country it's still evolving with the country so um setting the story in lagos is because this without um and this is not because i've lived in lagos my life all of my life but i could say that without lagos there's something missing in nigeria as a nation so and i i i think i could just end this with um why should my why should my novel interest uh why should an italian experience reading nigerian literature mm. I, I i think stories are universal really and if i in my corner of the world could read the great italian writers like um italo calvino and find pleasure in his words and and be perplexed be by the the complexities of his thought why shouldn't my story be read why shouldn't it be experienced you know um while the certain of the nigerian lit of nigerian literature may, may can perhaps it is different from stories set in italy but one thing that stories do which literature my novel will do is that it um it's actually conveys the human experience which we all face experience of fear of anger of hate of love all of these emotions are common to all of us and with in any part of the world we are we feel we are always also negotiating that conflict inside of us alongside the desire to be safe to be secure and so i would think of my story as um, what umberto eco calls uh, uh opera apata I'm, i'm not sure i got that. yeah that would be um an open open um open book that is open that a dynamic field where the italian reader encounters new ideas you know and the first step to encountering a new idea is being open wanting to know the story there's a new experience in reading others and the, it opens us to the world that's what literature does and so the italian experience of reading nigerian literature is to be able to see another part of the world to see how much we are connected even when our stories are set in different places thank you very much ciao